Our, our reading this morning from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. If you haven't got your Bibles open, I, I uh, encourage you to do that. We're going to be uh, spending a couple minutes here. We're going to be uh, looking back into last week's passage just a little bit. And uh, it might be helpful to follow along in your Bibles. Matthew 14, uh, starting in verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up onto a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, Save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. As we dig into it this morning, we pray for your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us as we as we apply that word to our daily walk, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, you know, sometimes when everything seems like it's going really good in our lives, and everything just seems to be clicking, falling into place, you even see God working around you. Maybe even you see God working through you. But, but then for no reason, you start to get these doubts that start to creep in. Um, and if left unattended, those doubts can, can grow into full-blown fears. Fears that you're not adequate to serve. Fears that you're not good enough. Fears that you don't know enough. Fears that, that you don't have any help. Fears that you can fill that last one yourself. Because we all have them, don't we? Um, I probably don't have to say this, but fear robs us of the hope that we have in Christ. And it's kind of human nature. We all have fears. It's natural to fear. And it seems there's no limit to our fears. I remember hearing about a, a long time ago, this Charlie Brown comic strip, one of the Peanuts comic strips. Charlie Brown is struggling with, with these issues of fear. And, and he goes to Lucy in her little psychiatric help booth that she has. And Lucy's trying to diagnose his problem. And she says, well, Charlie Brown, perhaps you have hypengynophobia, which is the fear uh, of responsibility. And Charlie Brown says, no, that's not it. Well, perhaps you have allurophobia, which is the fear of cats. No, that's not it. Perhaps you have climacophobia, which is the fear of stairs. No, Charlie Brown says, that's not it. Well, then, maybe you have pantophobia, which is the fear of everything. Charlie Brown's eyes light up and says, that's it. I'm afraid of everything. Maybe it feels like, at times, you're struggling with everything. Maybe it seems like, at times, you're afraid of everything. Maybe you're afraid of yourself, you're afraid of others, you're afraid of living, you're afraid of dying, you're, you're just afraid of everything. Each one of us has our own fears. And we must battle these fears uh, ourselves. But we have help that comes along. Our church family can come alongside if you'll seek them out and, and ask for help. But even in the Bible, we see people with fears. Paul, one of the pillars of the early church, we, we never think of Paul being afraid of anything, would we? Uh, I mean, he was just the biggest evangelist in the, in the New Testament. I mean, he was a, a pillar, right? 
But yet he wrote in 2 Corinthians 7, verse 5, uh, as they were returning into Macedonia, he, he said, For when we came into Macedonia, this body of ours had no rest. We were harassed at every turn. Conflicts outside, fears within. You might never think of, of Paul having fears, but, but he did. He certainly rejoiced when he suffered for Christ. But that didn't mean he wasn't afraid from time to time. And he had to work to overcome those fears. Each one of us has to work to overcome our fears. The message of the Bible over and over again is do not fear. When, when Abram took his family to the promised land, uh, he feared that he was turning his back on everyone he knew. For the unknown, he, he had no idea what to expect. God said to him, go, and so he left everything and he went. And then God said in Genesis 15, verse 1, he says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. So Abraham, Abram feared. God said, do not fear. When the, G, uh, when the Jews stood at the, at the Red Sea and, and Pharaoh's chariots are coming over the hill and, and the Jews are trapped and they see this huge army descending down upon them. Moses said to them, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. When the Jews were afraid, the message that God gave to Moses was, do not be afraid. When the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said that she would bear a child, she trembled with fear. What would happen to her? Certainly we know in those days, uh, promiscuity was certainly not tolerated. The, the penalty for a, an unwed mother could be stoning. They could drag her outside the city gates and throw stones at her until she was dead. Uh, she probably had right to tremble with fear. But when Mary was afraid, God's message to her was do not fear. Do not be afraid. We even heard it in our message this morning, didn't we? They thought Jesus was a ghost. And, and I imagine they were panicking at the sight of this ghost coming towards them. And Jesus calls out, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. They were trembling with fear, but Jesus' words to them were, do not be afraid. It's kind of a fun reading, isn't it? Peter hears that it's Jesus, and, and he wants to believe. Fear may be creeping in around the edges, but he wants to believe. I think the same can be said for us at times, right? We want to believe, but these fears tend to creep in a little bit. We, we know that God is with us. Uh, we know that he's our protector. We know that he'll even fight our battles for us if it comes to that. But still, these fears creep in. And, and I know you have them because I have them too. We all have them. Kind of human nature. Today, I hope we're going to see a formula for how to move through these fears that we may have. Um, moving forward while still battling our, our doubts and fears. So let's kind of set the stage a little bit more. We'll, we'll take a look at our context again. Uh, last week we saw the, uh, the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Uh, and that's the only miracle recorded in all four Gospels. So we talked about last week, there must be something really important for us if that's the only one that's in all four Gospels. Uh, and, and I think we uncovered what made it so special, didn't we? That, that Jesus is our provider, that Jesus can provide for us no matter what. It's about provision. Even when it seems impossible, Jesus can provide. Uh, Jesus asked the disciples to feed 5,000 men plus women and children, as many as 10 or 12,000 people. We don't know for sure. They only counted the men. But 5,000 men, uh, Jesus asked them to feed all those people with virtually no food. Uh, they had a small boy who had his lunch, a couple of loaves of barley bread and, and a couple of small fish. Uh, but when they brought the problem to Jesus, and then they brought the bread and the fish to Jesus, he blessed it. And it turned out that was enough. He started breaking off pieces and breaking off pieces, and it turned out to be that was enough. 
There's a small line last week in, in, in last week's passage, Matthew uh, 14. We didn't see last week, but it's, it's my favorite line in that story. It's Matthew 14, verse 20. And we saw the first part of that verse. It said they all ate and were satisfied. We saw that much. We talked about that last week. That, that everybody took some bread and they ate it. And they were satisfied. They, they didn't want any more. They, they'd had enough. That was good. What we didn't see was the second half of verse 20 that says, And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. I think that's uh, an incredible passage. Because, uh, let's face it, how many disciples were there? It was 12, right? How many baskets full of leftover bread? 12. So all of those disciples who were grumbling and complaining that they didn't have any food to give them, each had to carry a basket full of bread leftovers back to the boat with them. I think that's awesome. Talk about God's provision, right? You think they understood the purpose of that event, the message behind that, that Jesus will provide? You think they'll ever forget that miracle? I don't think so. I don't think so. Back to our passage today, it happens immediately after last week's passage. Immediately after the miraculous feeding, Jesus kind of sends them home, the crowds disperse, and today's passage begins by having Jesus putting the disciples onto a boat to sail across the lake. Genesaret is their destination. He says, you guys sail tonight, I'll meet up with you, I'll meet up with you later. I'm sure they're thinking in a few days, Jesus will show up in Genesaret and we'll get back together again. Now we talked about last week uh, about how Jesus needed some alone time. He had just heard his cousin was killed in prison. He needed some time in prayer, some time to process what had happened. Uh, some time to just get his head on straight. He'd been going full bore for a long time now. He gets this horrible news, this really sad news. And he just needed to get away from everybody for a while. Uh, he needed to spend some time alone in prayer. Um, the same holds true for us, doesn't it? There are times in our lives when things just seem overwhelming, when things just seem to pile on, when grief hits us hard, or, or other struggles just hit us hard. And we just need some alone time in prayer. When things get crazy, get yourself alone and spend some time in prayer. Now look at our reading again. I'll start in verse 23 here. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, they, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. So Jesus was alone most of the night, right? They left out in the evening, probably early evening. They set sail. Jesus goes up to the top of the mountain, and, and it says that uh, it was almost dawn when Jesus finished up and was getting ready to join them by walking across the lake. Uh, so from early evening to almost dawn, Jesus spent the night by himself in prayer, right? Now, because the wind was against them and the waves were against them and, and sailboats can't sail into the wind very well, so they hadn't made a lot of progress. I, I get the impression when I look at that and, and I think of that, I, I think they're maybe halfway across the lake, maybe not even halfway across the lake. And Jesus decides to walk out on the water. Now, who, who else could walk on the water but the person who created the water, right? If anybody could walk on the water, uh, Jesus would, would probably do it. And, and here's where we begin to see the fear that we're talking about this morning. Verse 26 says, When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. They cried out in fear. And here's where we can look at what, what happened as the scene played out and see how they responded and how Jesus responded to that fear. Maybe we can find a pattern for our lives when, when we get afraid of things, when fears and doubts begin to creep in our hearts. Uh, how do we move forward from there? 
The first words we hear from Jesus are the words, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Take courage, do not be afraid. I saw an interesting definition from uh, David Prince, who said, courage is not the absence of fear, it's the understanding that, that there's something more important. We can still be afraid, but we realize there's something that needs to be done. There's something more important than our fears that we need to get done. So I think when we're courageous, it doesn't mean we're not afraid. It just means we move out in our fear and we do what we need to do, right? Um, now that it is I statement from Jesus is just a reminder that, that he's with them. It's me. I'm, I've come. I'm, I'm here with you. Uh, we can deal with our fears a lot more effectively when we know that Jesus is with us, can't we? Uh, so he reminds them that he's with us. Uh, incidentally, he tells us in his word that, that he is always with us, right? He says he will never leave us or forsake us. We can count on that. Jesus is with us. Even in your fears, even in your doubts, even in those times when you're afraid, Jesus is with you. So the first step for us when we feel that fear is creeping in is to take courage and know that Jesus is with us. Don't be afraid. We've already heard several examples of when God told people not to be afraid uh, because God is with us, we need not fear. But I've got one more verse for you. It's from Isaiah 41 verse 10. Isaiah says, do not fear, while well, God is telling Isaiah, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now this prophecy is, is one of the prophecies of, of the invasion of Babylon. This is an early one, so we're probably 200, 250 years before it actually happens. But God is starting to tell the prophets, even now, this, this far in advance, that, that if Israel doesn't repent and doesn't get right with God, doesn't start following God, he's going to send an enemy in to overtake them. And he's going to carry them away in exile. Um, they need to get straight for us. Uh, but then he tells, tells them to stand firm and keep the faith. And if they can keep their faith during that time, they will be restored. Well, I think that's a message for us too. Whatever it is that's causing you to fear, stand firm. Keep the faith. Don't be afraid. And know that God is not only with you during your trial, but he's going to restore you in your trial as well. Uh, at the proper time, he will bring restoration. So the first step is to take courage. Don't fear what's happening. Know that God's with you and he's going to restore you. The second word in, in this passage that Jesus speaks is the word come. Come, an invitation to come. More precisely, Peter, remember the bold one, right? The, the one who has no limits, just ready to try anything. Peter says, Jesus, if it's still you, if it's really you, let me come out to you and walk on the water. Jesus says, okay, come. And Peter came. He got out of the boat. He climbed over the edge of the boat and started to walk towards Jesus, right? He was doing it. He was walking on the water. Um, but what happened? He lost his focus, didn't he? Verse 30 says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Now, he knew all about the wind, didn't he? He knew the wind was high. They had been fighting the wind all night. The waves were enough that they, they still hadn't got halfway to Gennesaret. Uh, he knew the wind. But when he was focused on Jesus, the wind didn't matter, right? It was when he got distracted. Uh, he noticed the wind and the waves and how, hey, this isn't such a good idea to be out of the boat right now. He took his eyes off Jesus and he started focusing on the problem and he began to lose it. Think of whatever trial it is that has you struggling has you in fear or doubt this morning, whatever it is, I bet you've lost focus on Jesus. 
See, it's when we begin to see the problems around us, the trials, the things that make us struggle, uh, that's when fear begins to take hold. That's when we begin to focus on other things and we take our eyes off Jesus. For Peter, the wind and the waves were a distraction and he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. Don't let anything distract you because it's when we take our eyes off Jesus that we begin to sink. The last words we see in this passage that, that Jesus speaks, uh, verse 31, immediately Jesus reaches out his hand and caught him. Oh, you of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? I think we're all familiar with those words, aren't we? We've all heard those before. Oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? I, I think he tells us that maybe in part to remind us of the relationship between fear and faith. They're actually opposites, aren't they? We fear the most when our faith is the weakest. And, and we fear the least when our faith is strongest. There's a few verses that can help us out with that too. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 reminds us that for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. If God didn't give us a spirit of fear, where do you think it came from? It came from Satan, didn't it? It came from our enemy. Uh, he's trying to pry us away from God. He's trying to distract us. He's trying to give us something that will take us, take our eyes off Jesus. Don't let him win. Stand firm. Have faith. Don't doubt. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Psalm 54, verse 1, uh, verses 3 and 4 tells us, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? I think that gives us some good news, that, that if we're focused on Jesus, there's nothing that the world can throw at us that we can't handle. You've got this. That might not be entirely true. God's got this, but we're with God, right? Maybe we don't have it. Maybe we're totally out of our league. But God's with us, and God's got this. John 14, 27 tells us, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. You can't experience peace if you're fighting fears. Peace comes when, when there's no fear. And when fears come, we tend to lose our peace, don't we? So the next time you find yourself in the sinking syndrome, the next time you find yourself sinking, fears come in, doubts overwhelm. Remember these words, don't be afraid. And why shouldn't we be afraid? Because Jesus is with us. He's invited us to come to him. And his presence helps strengthen us in times of fear. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Uh, we thank you that, that when you're with us, everything's okay. We thank you that, that when you're with us, there's nothing to fear. We thank you that when we're in your presence, uh, we can handle anything that comes our way. Thank you for always being with us. Uh, we pray for the focus, for the strength uh, to keep ourselves uh, close to you, connected with you, uh, filled with you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.